What's up everybody, my name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my Seder and today we are talking about A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I've actually had this on my like bookmark list at the library for years, <laughs> like literal years. It just sits there and every time it becomes available, I think about checking it out and then I never do because it came out in 2003. It sounds like it would be kind of weird. I wasn't sure about it. But then of course, I know that this author wrote The Diviners and that's like my cousin's favorite series. She loves it so much, but they're very long. So I haven't read them yet, it's on my list. But my friend recommended this book to me and she was like, listen, this book might not have aged very well, but I really enjoyed it, it was really great. I think you might like it. So I decided to finally check it out. And honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this and I am so pleasantly surprised. So Great and Terrible Beauty is about a girl named Gemma. She witnesses her mother's death um, in the first chapter. Obviously this really shakes her up, but then she is shipped off from her home in colonial uh, India. Um, back to London, she's going to go to a finishing school, and once she's at this finishing school, things start to kind of happen. And if I was to describe this book, I would say it's like The Witch, The Beguiled, and Midsommar all kind of wrapped up in one. There's something sinister, there's something supernatural kind of lurking beneath the surface. Like the beginning of this book feels very much like it's said in 1890 whatever, and it's this girl who's going to a finishing school and like the other girls are mean and they play pranks and whatever, but Gemma gets visions, which is a little bit strange. And then she arrives at the school and something is calling her somewhere. She discovers this mysterious diary. She's learning about this weird cult. And this man followed her from India and is saying weird things about how she shouldn't do these things and blah, blah, blah. And it was all just so very intriguing. And I think my favorite thing about this is that I really did think it was gonna be a romance. I, I thought it was gonna be kind of like a weird romance between like her and this man from India India and it's from 2003 and that stuff hasn't aged well. I will also say there are gypsies in this book. Again, that has not aged well at all. I really do think that the, the race issue in this book is a little bit of an issue, but story-wise, I do like where she was going with it. But looking at the cover, I assumed this was going to be a romance and it's not. Like this is about Gemma and these three girls that she meet at school and them kind of coming into their own power, them discovering, you know, like, I don't wanna be controlled by my parents. Like maybe I don't wanna marry this like 50 year old man that like, my my family has set up for me, you know, or like my mother left me when I was young and that's really affected me or I'm not as pretty as these other girls and they're they're ignoring me. Like they're learning to like come into this power and learning how to like be their own people. And it was really awesome to see. And honestly, I was very captivated by it from start to finish. Now I am only giving this book a B minus and that is because of the fact that it just hasn't aged very well. Even for 2003, I think like the gypsy sections and like the India sections are like a little bit too much. I honestly do think the stuff with like the Rakshana and like all of that is not explored very much. I didn't know that this was gonna be a series. So I was like, why is this character just randomly here? Like what's going on? I'm assuming it's going to be explored more as the series goes on, but I do kind of think this book shouldn't have had a section in India at all. I don't know how you can work around the gypsy section, but she could have made it way less racist and way less sexist, but the actual story when it comes to the girls, I did really enjoy. So I would recommend this book, but I would keep that stuff in mind. I, I would keep in mind that it just, it hasn't aged very well. Um, I mean, it's been almost 20, it's so weird to say, it's been almost 20 years since this book came out, but it just, there are some things that I think if it had been written today, definitely would not be in this book right now but it's those aspects that are like the witch, that are like the beguiled, that are like Midsommar, that just like really speak to me. And so for those reasons, I did really enjoy the story. I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the series. Maybe if I can find them at the library. I got this one at like a bargain bookstore, which is why I picked it up. But if I can find them at the library, I probably will. But we'll just kind of have to see where it goes. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to Top Books With Me every week. That is everything I got for today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.